And the award for best Lego show about another Lego show goes to Masters on Masters with Chris and Pete. It's so nice. We need to thank a few people. Yeah, though. So, that's, uh, so I think uh, I'd really like to thank our producer, Sam. Uh, and our director, Sam. Can't forget yeah, about her. Yeah. And Craft Services, uh, Sam's Catering. That's right. Yeah, delicious. Delicious. delicious uh, also, Sam Sound for their great Sam sound Sam. work they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. Couldn't and, uh, do without them. I'd really like to thank our best girl, Sam. Uh, yes, yes. And all of our key grips. All right, Sam. Grips, Sam. That's right. Oh, our cameraman, Sam. That's right. Oh, it's Sam. Sam. This week on LEGO Masters, it was kind of a sad week. We lost yeah. the only father and son team. Manny and Nestor, Nestor. unfortunately, uh, sad. I know. Not it's the not only up. father and oh, son team. No, because the I'm the papa. The the papa. papa. <laughs> so, the one, the only LEGO Master Model Builder, Dan Steininger. My hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yep, yeah, that's I am the father, and I feel like a father to Pete. Too. I filed all the paperwork. We're just waiting <laughs> for the returns. Yeah. We've uh, we've all been working together for quite a while. So, I, I was uh, around 10 years or so with you, and then Pete, you've been. I was about 19. 19, 19 years, years that like we that. worked yeah. together. That's so, right. you're since retired, obviously, but, uh, but you know, your start at Lego really didn't get started. Uh, well, it got started because of me. I'm going to just say oh, you're right now. Credit I'm for taking that, huh? credit because. <laughs> I had Lego. I was playing a lot as a kid growing up, and you actually enjoyed building with me. That's true. So we would build together, and uh, I didn't play with Lego as a child, but I really enjoyed it once I started playing with you with yep. Lego and realized all the cool stuff you could make with Lego. But just, but just before you, uh, he had plastics. He just he personally <laughs> yes. didn't have any Lego. Didn't he had that old. Lego. Not just a wooden duck. I didn't have just a wooden <laughs> duck back in 32, okay? In 32, yeah. No, yeah. no. and so, uh, uh, yeah, we would play, and then I remember we would make cards, and we'd yep. get demolition derbies and smashing cards. I would talk it up about win. how much you would kick his butt. Oh, I was, I was, I was the mass He was back cheating. Then. He was, what? you were cheating. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna lay these cards on a table right now. He was putting quarters oh. inside. He was taking rolls of quarters, stuffing it inside his car, so it was super heavy, and he would just steamroll everything <laughs> I put out there. Well, I found that out once I finally made a car that was strong enough to take a chink out of his armor. I found oh. the roll of quarters <laughs> in there. True. Okay. Hey, that was true, but it was, what was that? This is like? pre-internet, so oh, he yeah. had to come up with this on his own, that's so ingenuity true. gets points. Ingenuity, ingenuity, ingenuity gets that's points, what it was, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, Chris, they actually get me started with Lego, and then I, I was lucky enough to get a job at Lego uh, yeah. and become a master model builder, and so that was really cool, and then we got to work together on a lot of projects. We one did. of them that comes to mind is the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, that was a good that one. That was an awesome project. Pete designed that, and we wanted to make it really big, so we designed a smaller pro prototype that was three feet by four feet, yep, yep. and then it was eventually gonna become 12 by uh, 16, yeah, is that right, what it was? Yeah, yeah, 12 yeah. by 16 feet. And so we built that, uh, where did we build that? Malaysia, Australia, we built that in uh, Detroit. Detroit, right, yeah, on. Detroit. Uh, Detroit, that's right, we had the symphony orchestra there, and they were playing all the Star Wars music, <laughs> it was right. awesome. I, let me some. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. That, it was awesome. Not, we had I the wasn't whole, there though. No, that's, that's why it made it even moment. better. I think you it were was, with your other son, Jeff. I think. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Jeff. And so, and so, it was a lot of fun there. And the Millennium Falcon is probably one of my favorites, and uh, especially, especially because I had both of my boys involved that's right, with that that's one. Right. <laughs> This week on LEGO Masters, the theme was Hollywood Blockbuster, which here in the shop is something we really get to do a lot of awesome projects yeah, around and excited because we're all movie fans. We are. And again, we, we are. get to build some crazy models to support some movies. Yeah, so we worked on everything from the LEGO movie, and you, Pete, were able to work on a really cool model for Avengers Endgame. That's right. I got to do a life-size Thanos donning the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, absolutely. So let's bring it back to these models here right in front of us, actually, which represent two examples of two different movie genres, which That's would right. once be... Uh, one over here being the future scene, and then right over here being more of a modern day uh, type model. Yeah, definitely representational of the present with, say, a brownstone yep. versus, I believe this could live in the clouds, which it I think could. is really cool, Absolutely. really awesome. But they both feature a, a mode of transportation. We have a standard car you'd see today versus a spaceship. Absolutely. Uh, one delivering croissants, because again, delivering croissants. they never go out of vogue, they're delicious. <laughs> uh, and. I don't know, Chris, what do you think? Interesting like... piece usage uh, on oh, this definitely. one here. You know, definitely. And actually, one of the, the featured elements this week in LEGO Masters was the cheese wedge. And you can actually see them being used right here on both, actually yeah, all three, three of these right yeah. here, four of these, including that guy right there. Uh, so it really, you can use pieces, the same pieces, in different ways to really create a totally different look. Absolutely, yeah. 
So this week being movie week, there's no way we can get out of this week without talking about the Lego movie, That's the right. biggest Lego blockbuster out there. And we actually have examples of, well, models that were actually featured in the film. That's right, yeah. We here in the shop were really lucky. We had the opportunity to work on all of the uh, builds that you see at the end of the yeah, film. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think there's four larger builds in total, being the central section where yep. all the action goes down. Two side models that were uh, kind of like the Lego landscapes in episode one, Lego yeah. Masters. And uh, we had one other one of the Octan Tower, which That's is right. where the big uh, showdown at the end of the film takes place. Absolutely. So we actually have two examples here of models that were featured quite heavily in the movie, yes. uh, including this horse over here, which is actually taken from our shop. So yeah. uh, at one point, the directors talked to Paul Shun, who's one of the other Lego Mass builders, and said, hey, yeah. grab whatever you can have uh, uh, that we can have from around your shop because we yep. need set dressing. And uh, this model here, the directors just loved it and yeah. ended up uh, being featured uh, during the film. And then over here, we have... Uh, yeah, this is Ma and Pa Cop's house. Right. Uh, and yeah, this obviously, a lot of really good scenes in the movie take place in this. Uh, heavily featured, actual prop. It's pretty cool that we have it in the shop. And Absolutely. We can add it to the uh, horses and other models we have <laughs> floating around. Absolutely. Mark and Boone are the big winners this week on LEGO Masters. They uh, did their model Shark Song, yeah, uh, totally. which was an awesome, awesome model, very compelling. Uh, the initial genre they started with, monsters. Monsters. Who doesn't gets, want to build on yeah, that theme? Yeah. Exactly. Then it gets slammed with romance. I mean, those two don't go together so easily. <laughs> no, no, no. Especially when you consider that they were given a chunk of time, the time elapsed, they think they're done, here comes the twist. Yeah, and then I think my biggest thing for them uh, was the fact that they had an awesome brainstorm session with Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Yeah. Yes, that yes. really, I think, brought their model together. And they added on another layer of a subgenre of musical, which they kind of did, you know, yeah, jokingly. Yeah. But in the end, it did exist. It became part of the story. You know, the additional shark they added was yep. in captivity. She wanted to get saved, so she used her siren song yep, to, to draw the mutant, the, the mutant, mutant shark, shark in. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the mutant shark. Uh, Boone did an awesome job bringing that shark to life. Yes. It's not yes. his typical media that likes to work in, meaning, meaning natural sculptures. Yep. Uh, so he's used to building buildings and stuff like that. So yep. it definitely stepped out of his uh, comfort zone creating something uh, that was yeah. more of organic sculpture. And it had movements and eyes that light up. So good job, Boone. That's it. The Silly Show is over. Pete and I, we're out of here.